you, K.S. You... Chia from um, School of Public Health, National University of Singapore. I'd like to refer to uh, Victor's uh, presentation where you talk about evaluation of health systems and you suggested kind of three domains, avoidable mortality, avoidable hospitalization, and access to uh, specialty care. Um, isn't the area of uh, primary prevention actually left out uh, in terms of the, as an indices for um, uh, evaluation health systems. Uh, most primary health care do not have uh, primary prevention activities. So how, how do you incorporate that uh, into evaluation? Yes, <coughs> yes, I agree primary prevention is left out and I agree it's very important. And it's left out because I don't have any indicators because primary prevention includes uh, all of health education, uh, uh, includes uh, communication of health information. It, can, it, it includes so much uh, that I don't, I don't, if you have some indicators to suggest, that would be a start, but it wouldn't be sufficient because we wouldn't have the data. So I was very limited by the data available, but I share with you the importance. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's encompassed within primary care, but I realize it primary care it doesn't catch everything you mentioned. More questions? Yes, please. Oh, thank you. My name is Gorombu from UN Habitat. I think so we see three different presentations, so very clear the difference between the north and the south. If you take the presentation of Catherine, it shows very clear in Africa, the post-neonatal mortality remains high. We know that in developed countries, is usually at the neonatal level. And surprisingly, the child mortality, where we can say in most developed countries, is almost existent, is higher than the infant mortality in most African countries. This shows very clear the environmental problem of Africa, yeah. and it remains to lack of water, improved water, lack of sanitation, and so based on that, UN Habitat have initiated in 2004 the Monitoring Urban Inequity Program. That monitoring program was to show very clear the African cities are not uniform because when you look at national report, always they show city is better than rural. But those data show very clear. In slum area, as you can see it in Kibera, have a mortality higher than the rural area. And I hope that uh, in this meeting we will have opportunity to address those inequalities and probably to have a program on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, here we go. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks to the uh, Edgar Peterson African Center Cities. Um, thanks to the presenters. I just I've got one question for Catherine and Jason. It strikes me that um, a lot of what is said in terms of a preventative approach and in terms of the cumulative disadvantage that was referenced, boils down to questions about family life. And from Catherine's work, it seems clear that within slum conditions, we're talking about a radically different conception of the family and dynamics of, fa of family life. And I'm curious how much of the research is focusing on that changing dynamic and how should our understanding of the changing family relate to strategies about how we intervene? Thanks. Any comment on that, Catherine? One thing that I can say about some of the research we've done uh, shows that actually even within the slums, there, there are huge differences. And some of the slums you've studied uh, are characterized by the, the split family phenomenon. And actually, uh, outcomes, especially child health outcomes, are better in those, fam in those slums which have split families as opposed to those slums which are more uh, where the families, uh, there are different generations of families living in the same slums. So um, I think uh, it's, it's an important question that is being uh, addressed at different levels. And I think it, uh, it goes back to the other issue that was raised about migration. Our, our study also shows that recent migrants, especially uh, women and children, have worse health outcomes. And the, the main reason is because they don't have access. They don't know yet where the different services are. So uh, it's, it's a an issue that we are looking at uh, in much more detail, and I think perhaps it needs to be further uh, you know, assessed, especially regarding the more long-term 
uh, effects of different intergenerational transfers of different things, whether it's genetics, whether it's disease, whether it's uh, knowledge, whether it's uh, uh, resources. Yeah. yeah, just quickly, I, I mean, I agree that the family dynamics have a role, but I mean, our work in, in Nairobi in particular shows that uh, more importantly is the presence or absence of community institutions to be able to respond to family dynamic change, to advocate for power and necessary services in different ways. So it's really that institution building and the sustaining of it uh, that allows different family dynamics to succeed or not succeed in our, in our research. Okay, from there. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, That's who you are, Sharon. Oh, sorry, uh, Sharon Creel. Uh, it's a question for each of the speakers, so three separate questions. Uh, to Victor, being, uh, trying to be devil's advocate, you said at the beginning, uh, somewhere between 10% and 25%, the organization of health care, and I would say medical care, uh, contributes to health. Should we really be investing in it? A second question, well, it's a question uh, to Jason. Jason, you made the point, I think, very clearly of the racial, racial segregation being such an important contributor in terms of health inequities. In your governance work, how are you addressing the structural determinant of racism? And then a question about the NCDs explosion um, that Catherine mentioned in Kenya. Is the NCDs explosion, you, you pointed toward the nutrition transition in street foods uh, and fast food outlets. That is arguably something that's been exported from the West, uh, from the rich world into some of the, the, the more developing countries. How is the discourse and discu policy discussions happening within Kenya and within Nairobi? Uh, that relates some of the processes of globalization to the health experience within cities? Uh, I don't know if we have time to, for three answers, but if you do it in, in two or three very short uh, words, please. Victor. I can be very brief. The question was, uh, I, I didn't, about the 10 to 25 percent that's attributable to medical care. What, what was the question? <laughs> no, well, w whether... Uh, I didn't mean to say that it was not a good investment. Uh, uh, what I was trying to say is that we, we need to work on many fronts at once. And to the extent that health care has some impact, whether it's 10 or 25 depends on whether we include primary prevention probably. <laughs> but okay. to the extent that it has some impact, I s said that we should take an integrated approach and not just deal with the social determinants. Catherine. Uh, on the issue of street foods, actually, uh, it's not just globalization. In the slums, it's because for you to prepare a meal, you need fuel, you need uh, salt, you need cooking oil. And if you have 20 shillings or 20 US cents, it's much better to buy a ready meal. So it's not so much about the globalization and all that. It's just the convenience and the, and the cost. At that point in time, it's cheaper to do that. As, as opposed to the policy discourses, uh, the Kenyan non-communicable disease policy, I think, is about one year old or less. Okay. So really not much has gone on in terms of uh, yes, you know, you education. Have uh, the issue of racism, structural racism, uh, is at the heart of, of our, the start of every conversation we have and okay. it needs to remain part of it. It's obviously not an easy issue or easy conversation. The mayor, the Chilean mayor, yes, please. Más bien un comentario. Nosotros en la comuna, a los niños que no tenía, que tenían más entrada al tema del alcohol, las drogas y la violencia. Uh, well, he says he has a comment in reference to, uh, in his case, in Lo Prado, Chile, in reference to the family dynamics. The children, uh, the children from low-income families that have problems, social problems like health, drugs, and you know other uh, behavioral problems. Eran niños que no tenían una imagen adulta significativa. Tampoco cuando entraban al colegio, so also, los profesores eran una imagen que les daba sentido. Also when they joined, when they went to school, they also uh, uh, saw the teachers also like an image, like an image. Y al salir okay. del colegio, después de las 4 de la tarde y hasta las 8 de la noche, estaban solos. Y cuando salieron de la escuela, entre 4 y 8 p.m., estaban en casa, así que 
tuvimos que hacer un programa de guardadoras infantiles con la propia comunidad para poder cuidarlos con afecto. So in order to solve this problem, they created a problem with a nanny, a nanny problem with, within the community to fill in this gap. Okay. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Well, we, we have seen this very different uh, layout, this $900 per capita year, more than $50,000 per capita year. I, I am wondering until uh, to, to which point we, we are comparing uh, at the moment today now eucronial uh, realities. That's to say, aren't we talking about Dickensonian London uh, today in Nairobi? Uh, uh, and and um, I think that uh, w w that should uh, generate some other approaches, more political. Uh, <coughs> The level of unemployment in Nairobi, it's probably 60% of the population has not a real a proper job, okay? Uh, then why don't we cross all this information with employment uh, and see what happens? Uh, then the social conditions, uh, it's quite clear that they affect the, the health. Um, they, they, they influence a lot, a lot, of course, we know that. But looking at the health of, of uh, Kenya and Nairobi, I, I, I am recovering a little bit of faith in, in my profession because at the end, I would uh, be expecting more differences. There are only 10 or 12 years or 15 years of uh, life expectancy difference between Kenya and, and New York. Uh, uh, look at these very global uh, figures. Huh? Um, of course, the only difference, or there's a lot of difference between London, Dickensonian London, and now. At that time, there were no vaccination. And vaccination, nowadays, although it not, has not solved uh, things, it, just, it has represented vaccinations, all of them, have represented a huge change in, 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 uh, in the life expectancy of people. It's not about medical care, it's about the men medical or health knowledge, applied more or less in, the, in, in life. Huh? But of course, I think that uh, uh, social conditions are very clearly here, explain most of it, and I will say social and political, because why don't we speak clearly? Uh, it's all that, it's about politics, it's about the organization of politics. Even the differences between uh, different mortality play, uh, uh, um, you know, descriptions in Paris and in Manhattan, uh, how, how is that related to unemployment and how is that related to the coverage, social coverage in case of unemployment? Uh, I think that this is uh, some, of the, some of the ways that we can think uh, on future because, you know, it's quite clear. You know, we don't need to know everything. Things, are, uh, in some way, they are evident. Uh, we prefer to, to, to live in a better and a rich society than in a poor, and you prefer, we prefer to have work uh, to oppose not having uh, work. Eh? And then the question becomes, at the end, if we want to be uh, efficient, is how we can help the poor uh, countries to have more employment and uh, how we can help in the poor, in the rich country, to recover employment. Thank you. Okay, we, um, it sounds as if, it feels as if we've been here a long time. We actually started a quarter of an hour late, so we're running five minutes late oh. in, in reality. No, no. So, coffee, but could you please come back in 20, 25 minutes. Thank you to Juan Clos, and thank you to all the speakers up and around. Thank you.